What is up, everybody? Welcome back to another edition of The Betting Show with me, Sean Sheehan, here on SureDog.com. And BetUS is offering our listeners an incredible 125% bonus on their deposits for the UFC card this weekend between Luka and Mohammed. Use the code SureDog to get $2,500 in extra money to make the fight night even better. At BetUS.com, you can not only bet on each fight, but they have loads of awesome parallels to choose from too. Bet live during the fights and get your winnings uh, within hours. Start the fight at BetUS.com. Use the promo code SHERDOG. So let's get straight into it. Let's get into the, the, the bets here. Uh, we had a couple of winning bets last week. It was a pretty good week. Um, we had the flyer of the week before. So we've been going pretty well now. And and we will uh, we will keep the ball rolling here. Two massive cards this weekend. Well, one massive card, I suppose, and one one very good main event with some good uh, fight night uh, car uh, fight under it. Even we have obviously Bilal Muhammad versus Vicente Luque in the UFC, and I will go through uh, a lot of the uh, a lot of the fights in that. I actually went through the very f- fine tooth comb this week. I had uh, Ian O'Neill and Spencer Kai down with me to break down the whole card. I have a Bellator preview as well. Uh, it'll probably be out before this, but uh, breaking down that whole card as well. So two two cards I've, I've talked a lot about this week and, and uh, you know, um, kind of quizzed myself a lot about this week. And, and, and I feel like I have a good uh, a good kind of idea of, of a lot of the fights this week and, and who I think might win and might lose and maybe how they will win. So we will get uh, all, uh, we get into all of that. Um, before I start, please bet responsibly. Uh, don't bet too much. Don't go mad altogether. Bet what you can, uh, and uh, you know, do it in a smart way. I, as I say I ever here every week, I do it uh, for fun. I'm an MMA guy more than, than a betting guy, so maybe I'll give you a couple of ideas if you're a betting guy with the MMA guy. Maybe you can put it together, and uh, you can get uh, get something, uh, get something right, and get something going. And you know what? It's uh, I think it's an interesting time as well now for um for betting and for mixed martial arts in in general because we just had the massive UFC 273 card and now is the one maybe where uh the the people who've paid more attention to maybe not the the bigger name fighters in the world might pay off for them here like even doing the extra bit of research on the fighters this weekend for the card I was breaking down you know usually I'm breaking down the top four or five fights that's kind of my MMO, MO with the, all the different podcasts I have to do and everything but I had a different assignment this week and I was looking more into the undercard fighters and everything like that I feel like it's one of those things as well where these days with the amount of fights on YouTube the amount of fights on UFC Fight Pass it's maybe easier for the betters out there to get a good idea of what fighters are like, even guys who maybe haven't been in the UFC or haven't maybe have only one fight in the UFC. And, uh, you know, before, I remember back back in my day, it was very hard to get tape, even UFC tape on people, but now it's it's a lot easier. And uh, I think for the, for the smart MMA heads out there who can kind of see uh, quality and who can who know what a good fighter is, it's it's probably yeah, it's probably a good time for uh, for betting. Now, having said that, a lot of my bets this week are actually like relatively small prices, just because I feel like it's one of those. I, I think it's going to be a favorites week. Honestly, we we usually see it in MMA. It's probably it's probably sixty forty. I would say favorites to to underdogs, which is would be massive in any other sport. But I I think it's going to be bigger this week. Or maybe sixty forty is probably that. But you you know what I mean. I I feel like it's going to be uh it's going to be a very he- f- a favorite heavy. Uh, week this week in in the world of mixed martial arts. So let's get straight into it. Um, the first bet I'm going for is actually the the only under well the only underdog in my main four bets I'm going for, and that's uh that's Corey Anderson to win in the Bellator co-main event against uh, Vadim Nimkov. Um, I honestly I I talked about it in in the preview I did, and I talked about it in in a couple of different podcasts now at this stage and. It's one of those ones where I just have that feeling. I feel like they're both very even fighters. I actually heard Corey Anderson speaking on the um, to Big John McCarthy and Josh Thompson at the Bellator press conference or, or the media day uh, therein after. And he was kind of talking about how his wrestling was a little bit different to Nimkov's wrestling in that he uses kind of his his speed and lower body takedowns where Nimkov is maybe an upper body takedown artist. Now, that, that actually kind of gave me two things to, to think about it's like against the cage oh, is that going to him have saying against the cage Nimkov might have an advantage and the other half of him saying well if it's out in the open if it's if we're turning this into a wrestling match where there's going to be double legs and maybe it's going to be a, a speed or scrambles battle that he'll win it I, I f- like my big my big thing breaking down this fight apart from the, the grappling point of view anyway 
is who is going to win those scrambles because look Nimkov I think is probably the, the stronger guy uh, in the clinch as, as Corey Anderson kind of alluded to maybe um, and a stronger guy in general anyway so if there are you know, strength positions. If there are, you know, uh, you know, big, big hip tosses or anything like this, again, that against the kid, he would probably win some of those positions. Now, it's not like he's going to bully Corey Anderson around, and don't get me wrong, but I haven't taught myself about the speed advantage for Anderson and then what he mentioned with kind of that wrestling. Now it's him saying it as well, so you can take what a pinch of salt, I suppose. But I do think he might might be able to not not necessarily even have an advantage in those scrambles if it hits the ground, but do enough to like not give Nimkov an, uh, Nimkov an advantage there, uh, which I think could be big because you see in a lot of Nimkov's fight, even the, the Anglixus fight, where Anglixus has hurt him, um, I wouldn't say he was necessarily causing him major problems, especially as the fight went, but Nimkov loves to throw in a takedown to kind of change how the fight is going and to, to give himself a breather as well and things. So I feel like if that can't be a thing he can do against Anderson, like a lot of Nimkov's fights um, have been walkovers, if you want to put it that way, or have been, you know, him absolutely dominating. Whereas Corey Anderson, that's one thing you can't say about him throughout his career. Now, recently in Bellator, absolutely. But throughout his career, he's fought some of the best and brightest in the world in, in that division. Um, and he's he's well used to <laughs> tough matchups, if you want to put it that way. And we will see, like, if Nimkov is pushed, what, what can you I'm not saying he's going to, like, falter. He's not going to be rubbish or anything like that. Don't get me wrong. But I feel like that might be a, an extra key for it. Now, that's, that's aside from, the, I suppose, the breakdown I've done in the past and maybe quickly again. Like, the speed factor is well on the feet. I, I, look, I think... Nimkov is probably a better technician. He's probably a better uh, jabber and one-two artist down the middle. But Corey Anderson is very good there as well. And I think he's faster. So I, I, I just feel like if you have that little bit of an advantage on the ground in terms of speed, in terms of not giving Nimkov an advantage there, and if you can be faster than him on the feet and maybe land a few big shots. I, look, I do think this will be a long fight. I would be, I'd be surprised if it didn't go... Close to the five rounds, I could be a late finish or something like that. But I, I suspect this will go one, two, three, four into the fifth round. I, I, I think it'll be one of those fights, and a big part of that as well could be cardio. And like, if Nimkov was relying before on maybe his takedowns to spare that cardio a little bit, will that be an issue here as well? I just like I'm, I, I feel like I'm being very negative towards Nimkov here, and maybe positive to to reaffirm my bet. But that's kind of what I was thinking, you know. That's that's. Those are the positives, I think, to go to Anderson. I, and the reason why I'm going for him at plus 140 is I think there's slightly more positives for him than Nimkov. Now, look, Nimkov could go out, jab the face off of him for five rounds, take him down three or four times, and, and, he, and he could win. And Absolutely. But I just think Anderson is fresh. This is the prime time of his career. This is what he came to Bellator for. This is what they aimed him at. They've done a great job winning him, not giving him the toughest matchups in the world, but also, you know, giving him ones uh, like Yakshimuradov and others where, where he can win him and, and get to where he needs to get to. So, uh, yeah, I'm going for Corey Anderson to win in, in the Bellator co-main event at, uh, at plus 140. Um, right, the next bet I'm going for here, I'm going for um, Omari... <laughs> Omar Gadziev. I, uh, this name is always, it's always, uh, it's sorry, Gadzi Omar Gadziev. Uh, Omar, I, I was thinking of Mary Akhmedov. Uh, Gadzi Omar Gadziev. Uh, Gadzi Omar Gadziev, right? I, I get it right eventually. Um, and he's fighting, uh, Kao Bahalyo in the, uh, in the Coleman event over in the UFC. Now he's minus 135. And when I watched these lads, uh, preparing for the preview, uh, it was not one of those, fights where I look at it and think it's going to be close on the betting lines. I did not think that Omar Gadziev would be lower than minus 250, you know? I I I I was I was literally thinking like I was literally thinking I'd be coming on looking at Omar Gadziev and just completely leaving it to the side cuz his price was so big. I was like my number in my head when I think of it now was like minus 500 because I, I, while I do think Bahalio is a very good fighter, and I think I actually think he could go pretty far uh, in in the UFC in in the future. This is a nightmare matchup for him. Like this is a Russian wrestler against a um, uh, against a Brazilian karateka. Uh, which is, if anyone who knows anything about MMA, that's probably enough said there. Like is it? And watch, look. They haven't fought to the highest level yet, you know, coming from the Contender Series and everything. Um, 
a, a big part of this too is that you know that level what level can they reach what level is Omar Gaziev's wrestling haven't watched him to me it looks good <laughs> it, it looks like he won't have too much trouble taking most people down he's the type of guy as well who's kind of even on the feet and he knows you know he knows what to do on the feet he's not one of these guys who's completely out of it when it goes to uh when it stays standing or anything like that now Bahalio hits very uh, very hard and he's a a very very good striker and everything like that but i do think uh i do think that Omar Gadziev will have enough on the feet to keep him at bay to where if when it goes to the ground it's just going to be it's just going to be a cakewalk and, and he's going to find it very, very easy to win that fight, I think. Like, uh, another big thing as well, like, have I mentioned, I don't think I have. Um, from watching the few fights on the Contender Series, uh, Bahalio fought at, um, Bahalio fought up at 205 pounds in one of his fights and fought at middleweight in another one of his fights. And this fight is at middleweight. And the middleweight fight... He didn't. He looked okay and didn't look great. But at the two or five fight, I thought he looked great. Like this is the type of guy who fights the sort of fight where you can't be cutting weight, where you can't be you know draining yourself to get down there. You need that cardio advantage the later the fight goes. So I think it's going to be a, an issue as well the longer the fight goes, especially if he's after getting taken down two or three times. I think it's going to be a big, big issue for him here. And look, this is the co-main event as well. I think Bahalio talked about, you know, who in their UFC debut has debuted in the co-main event before. I'm actually not sure why it's a co-main event. Honestly, look, it is a good fight. And I I, I enjoy the, the styles clash here, I suppose, to steal a, a WWE uh, finishing move. But um, I, I, don't, I don't see it being that close. Um, and I don't see Omar Gadziev having too much of an issue. Now... I, I will preface that again, and that's a very bold thing to say for me, even thinking about it here, right here now, because I do like Bahalia, but I just think, I just think at that, at those odds, it's a nightmare styles matchup. He's 13 and all. His wrestling is so good that one takedown, honestly, could win him that fight. And I think that's enough for me uh, to, to go on there, and that's enough for me to. Uh, to, to go with uh, Omar Gadziev to win that one. Right, before my next bet, I must tell you that UFC on ESPN 34, Luke vs. Muhammad 2 is more fun when you bet at betus.com. Use the code SHERDOG and get an incredible 125% bonus up to $2,500. Luke at the moment is the favorite, so get in now or even choose to bet uh, to him to finish inside the distance, increase your winnings at betus.com. You can make the fights even more fun by betting throughout the fights. Start the fight at betus.com. And use that code SHERDOG, S-H-E-R-D-O-G. Right, next bet here I'm going for, I'm going for Devin Clark at minus 180. Now, uh, my, look, my next bet is also minus 180, and usually I don't give those um, those prices that that big or, you know, nearly a, nearly a two-to-one uh, favorite, sorry. Uh, but for these cards, uh, e- even maybe if you want to lump these in and go for Omar Gadzi of Clark and my, my third one here, which I'll give in a second, as a, as a treble or something like that, I think it might be good because there's a, there are a lot of fights on this card where I think the prices don't reflect how much of a favourite that the person should be. Now, Devin Clark is fighting William Knight here. Uh, and I think, as I said about the last fight being a nightmare matchup, I think this is a, an absolute nightmare matchup uh, as well for... Uh, uh, for him, it's look William Knight going up the heavyweight. He had problems <laughs> at two or five, making the weight obviously, but his cardio wasn't the best in the world. There, he's blown up. Uh, you know, uh, he's probably a blown up welterweight. <laughs> for, for being honest, not the tallest guy in the world, but muscles for days. And Devin Clark, watching his fights, he is a guy who will take you down over and over and over and make your night tough. You know, he can strike as well. He throws big right hands over the top, but he's fought a lot of a lot of very very good guys in the world, and former champions and stuff at, at two hundred and five pounds. He's not obviously has been successful don't get me wrong but he is a guy who has success in fights in terms of winning but also has success in terms of taking guys down and landing big shots on them now when you're fighting William Knight there's always the possibility that he lands a big right hand and he puts you into the nether region uh, which is uh, which is not easy uh, I suppose to to, uh, to game plan against but when you have that takedown when you throw it like the, the thing about William Knight as well is you don't exactly have to be you know Damian Meyer, Gunnar Nelson to set up the the takedown to uh, you know and, and be really smart about it because people know it's coming. 
William Knight is one of these guys who will, or, or you know, may, maybe a better example from the other side of it is like, say someone like an Adesanya now. Jan Blachowicz was able to take him down because he was so smart and so intelligent about it. You know, and and he, you have to be that way if you're fighting someone like him, or like a Jose Aldo, who is extremely good takedown defense. William Knight is not that. He kind of stands there in the middle of the cage and, and kind of waits for you to take him down nearly. Uh, I did think, though, in his last fight, uh, you know, sometimes we see William Knight and he's just throwing bombs all over the place and, you know, hooking, you know, like a fucking, like Frankie Sheehan back in the day. There's about four people who get that reference, but anyway. Um, and... I, I think he has adjusted his game a little bit from that. He is looking after his cardio a little bit more. He is standing kind of more staunch in the middle of the cage, looking for the shot. You know, we'll, we'll talk about uh, Patricio Pitbull in, in a few minutes in, in the in the, in the the roundup. Um, but I, I think I think that will actually help him in this fight, but it could hinder him as well. It'll, it'll help him to land those big shots if, he, if he's going to land the big shots. But I think it'll also hinder him in that he will be in the middle of the cage basically waiting for that takedown. And uh, that is that is going to be an issue for him. And I think once Devin Clark takes him down once, he will wear him out. The power will be gone and that will probably be the, the beginning of the end if, if we're being... Uh, if we're being honest in this one. So, yeah, uh, Devin Clark, minus 180. Right, the other uh, bet that I alluded to early on uh, is uh, Haley Alatang over Kevin Kroom at minus 180 as well. Watching this guy, uh, I was I was so impressed with him. Like, I think this guy is a really, really, really good fighter. And I was I was talking on the, on the preview with, with Spencer about him. Um, and, you know, he's... What is he? Fourteen, eight, and two now in his career. So maybe not a guy with the best record in the world, or maybe you're not thinking like he's gonna go and become a ranked fighter or a champion or anything like that. But he's an accurate right hand. Maybe not the most varied fighter in the world, but very good defensively. Good wrestler, very good wrestler, very good top control as well. And he's a sort of guy that I think I wouldn't lose hope on being like a, a very good fighter. Like, like someone like a Mark Casey as well is another guy like that where. You know, he at the moment you might look at him and go, okay, he's not. In the, although he won his last fight in a very, very good win, probably the best win of his career. But before that, maybe you're saying, okay, he's not on the best run of his career. He's not uh, fulfilling maybe that potential. But I'm there thinking in the background is like, well, he has that potential. And he still has that potential, and he's not too old. He hasn't taken loads of damage. It could still come good for a guy like Chikasi, and I think the same for Alating Ali. And uh, now that's coming from a guy like I, I've been watching Mark Chikasi for years and years and years you know, four or five fights probably before he got to the UFC or whatever it might be, with Alating Haley, I was like, well, let's go and watch some of his fights this week. So maybe I'm not the best in the world to, to actually tell you that. But what from what I've seen this week, I'm having gone back and watched uh, four or five of his fights, as many of them as I, I could find in Fight Pass and, and outside of it, I really like him. I like him as a fighter and he's a type of guy, maybe, I'm, I'm not sure. Maybe, hold on, I'll, I'll maybe look it up here, but I don't know where he's training. But if if... If you got him to like a, a really, really good gym, he's finding a fight ready, yeah. So they're a very good gym now. Like they um you know, they, they that is the gym where uh Henry Cejudo is training, isn't it? With, um uh Ch- uh Chance and Jung was fighting there at the weekend and all that. So I don't know how long he's there, but that that to me uh, exactly what I'm saying. I I didn't even know I was making the right point while I was making it. That to me is the type of place where he should be, and I think that will help him an awful lot to get him ready for where uh, he needs to be. And like going in against Kevin Kroom, fighting out of James Krause's gym. Like Kroom is a tough guy. You know, he's a very very tough guy. Throws a lot of strikes. You know, a typical kind of one of the guys, but maybe not the most talented guy in James Krause's room, but also one of the guys who never gives up. And is a better fighter because he fights out of that gym maybe than if he fought somewhere else, if you get me. Um, he just, he grows into a fight as well. Great cardio. So it's not the, not the easiest matchup in the world, but I just do think that, uh, Alatang Haley will be a little bit too classy for him. I think he will land, uh, with the, those straights right down the middle and make it really, really tough on him. And I think he'll make it a very, <sighs> A tough look. He'll make it a tough fight for Kroom to win technically, and I think he'll make it a tough fight for Kroom to impose his will on as well. If you get me, because he will control the fight very well, especially late. I think if it goes there, and he has that wrestling as well. To if Kroom is to get like a forward motion in the fight, he can always add in that takedown and change it and turn that fight around. So I think that's um, 
I think that'll be a big part of it too if it, if it goes like that. So, yeah, look, I'm looking forward to, to seeing that one and uh, and seeing uh, seeing how it goes. Right, my flyer of the week uh, this week. Uh, I'm going for uh, Wu Yanan at plus three fifty. Now I was actually looking uh, over on uh, over on Bet US uh, today, and I think it was I think it was around plus three thirty or something like that. It's been to and fro Um So if you can get it at plus three fifty, there I would take it at plus three fifty. Um, that price has been going down all week, and I think rightly so. Like I watched both bo- of these ladies fight. Um, I've obviously watched them before, but I went back and watched them this week, and I was surprised. It was another one of these lines I was surprised at. You know, we, we know Bueno Silva, and I suppose she has a great reputation and all of that. Uh, I think her reputation is a little bit overblown, to be honest. Um, I think she's, I just think she's a little bit too cocky. Like, she's very good on the ground, as we know, and she can, she can hit hard as well, but it feels like she's one of these people who's kind of fallen in love with her striking and wants to strike and kind of wants to be, um, I was going to see a Diaz brother, a Diaz sister here where, you know, she's like calling people on and like, come on, come on, come on and talking to them rather than actually fighting them. You know, Bobby Green was a little bit like that before he kind of turned the corner in his last five or six fights, I think. Um, and I always love betting against those fighters because they're fighters who have more talent maybe than their opponents, but throw away fights. So they go into the fight um, as a big favorite but come out of the fight kind of looking like they shouldn't have been a big favorite to get me. And watching Wu Yanan, um, she's one of these fighters where I think the only thing going against her is maybe how varied and how good her style is because uh, she is very loose on the feet. Very, very loose on the outside, should I say. She runs around an awful lot. Very, very elusive. And that causes her to, to kind of gas and her cardio is an issue late in fights. But I think against Bueno Silva, someone who kind of just like walks forward a little bit, but not with too much of a threat. If she lands one or two shots, Bueno Silva will kind of stand there, give her options to rest and maybe make it a little bit easier on her. You know, if Bueno Silva goes in there and tries takedown after takedown after takedown, then Wu Yanan, I think, absolutely could gas and could tire. And look, she could tire anyway because she tires herself more than anything else. But I look, I think Wu Yanan win the first round, and she will probably win the second round as well, maybe you know. But it'll be it'll be one of those fights that there'll probably be a point in the middle of the second round where she gets tired, the the, the tide changes a little bit, and you're probably betting on plus three fifty when that tide changes and how far it goes to win or Silva. Like if there is a like so you're you're talking about okay so you're Wu who's a very very good striker now Buena Silva is a good striker as well but uh she's more of a obviously the the, the ground game is is the uh the the best thing for her you know with um we're looking at record five submissions in in her seven wins um if there is like a a portion of the fight against the cage early i actually think Wu Yanan will benefit from that more than Bueno Silva because she'll get a little bit of a time to rest. She can get her gas back and then keep going again. And I think maybe she might be even better off as a fighter who looks like bigger and stronger, I think, than uh, than Bueno Silva, even though Bueno Silva has the grappling advantage. I think she might even be better off putting her against the cage for a while, resting there so that her cardio can keep going into the second and third round. That is her biggest flaw. If I didn't see that as a flaw, if I thought she could go three rounds here heavy, I would be overwhelmingly gone for her at plus 350 or plus 3 uh, even down to plus 300 I think I would still be going for her. I think I think it's a very very good bet I think it's a good flyer and I'm definitely going for Wu Yan and I, I would better straight up honestly I think she'll win this fight I, I don't think I think Mena Silva is a little bit overrated and I think uh, uh, Wu Yan is, is a bit underrated so yeah I'm going for her to win to win this one right those are my five bets. Let's quickly run through uh, some of the uh, the other bets for the cards this weekend. Uh, in the main event in the UFC, uh, Bilal Muhammad, he's um, I- and I avoided this one because I'm, I'm 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 honestly not sure. Bilal Muhammad's the underdog, plus one forty five over at uh, BetUS.com. Vicente Luque is minus one seventy five. Uh, if you like Muhammad inside the distance, plus four fifty, or to win a decision, plus three hundred. Luke inside the distance, plus one thirty, or plus three hundred by decision. Honestly, I don't like that plus one thirty. I think it's a little bit low for Luke there. Um, 
I, I, I like the decision bet better there, to be honest. Plus one, uh, plus 300. But I, I don't know. I would probably, look, I'd probably go Luca straight up there at minus 175. I, I do think, though, and the reason why I avoided this, I think there's too many maybe unknowns in terms of, um, unknowns is the wrong word, but I, I, I will wonder how Bilal Muhammad will fight this fight. And if his wrestling game, maybe, which I think he might put out here, will um, be enough to beat Luke in terms of, like, will he get caught in a submission or something like that? Or will he be able to control him enough? Like, Bilal, we've seen him in the last few fights, especially the Wonderboy fight. He's willing to be very, very... um, Defensive is the wrong word, but you know what I mean? He's not unoffensive, (laughs) maybe, if if you want to put it that way. Um, He he just... He will... He will fight a negative fight maybe to win it. And I, do you know what? There's nothing wrong with that. He's one fight away from fighting for a title. You, If that's the way to win, go out and win it. I'm not criticizing him for that at all. So, you know, maybe Bilal by decision is plus 300. Uh, will the fight go the distance? Even money, uh, minus 140 if you don't think it is. So if you uh, fancy like either guy to win inside the distance, minus 140, that's a pretty good bet there over at BetUS. So, yeah, uh, honestly, I don't have a strong feel for anything. Um, let me know in the comment section if you have a strong feel for anything there because I, I don't know. I like Bilal could be a good price at one, uh, plus one forty five. Luke could be a good price at minus one seventy one. I'm honestly not sure on that one. I think it's a very even. I think it's a, a pick em fight, and maybe you know maybe the fact that I think it is a pick em fight, even though I've gone for Luke, maybe Bilal Mahmoud at that price might be the better bet. But anyway, um, Jesse Ronson and and Hafa Garcia minus one fifteen. Both of them are. I, I think you know even fight again. I think that's probably right there. The next fight is one uh, I think is is they've got it right. Uh, Pat Sabatini is minus five hundred over TJ Laramie plus three fifty. Uh, it'll be interesting as well later in the week that the prop betting and that when it comes in, uh, I'd be looking at the submission there for Sabatini. Even at a if it's a plus money price, I'd be going for that. I think he's going to submit him. Uh, I have a big feeling for that. So that's uh, another one to keep an eye on there. As I mentioned, uh, Wu Yanan, she's actually down to plus three twenty five now. Uh, Bueno Silva minus 450. I think that line is way, way, way off. That is the line that stood out to me. I think that's miles off. Um, So, yeah, definitely be betting on Wu Yanan there. Uh, Chris Barnett plus 180. Martin Baudet minus uh, 230. You know, that's going to be the fun fight of the weekend. I think we're all looking forward to that one. Uh, You're probably better off uh, betting on Baudet there. You know, maybe uh, maybe a decision, but I, I uh, it's it's going to be tough to see Chris Barnett doing it again. But you never know. You never know. He's done it many times. Sam Hughes plus one thirty-five. Uh, Estela Nunes minus two twenty. And like the thing about that matchup, I think is that Nunes is obviously a very good striker. You know, the I think she was a two-time Brazilian Muay Thai champion or something like that. But Sam Hughes is a striker too. You know, um, and it's probably not the best matchup for her. But if Sam Hughes can, she yeah, look, she has wrestling, she has grappling as well. She's a well-rounded fighter. Don't get me wrong, but she'll need to be in this fight because Nunes's hands are so good. Uh, Kevin Crew minus or sorry, plus one fifty minus one eighty. Uh, 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 Alatang Haley obviously spoke about that one. The biggest uh, favorite in the card is Drakkar Close plus seven fifty plus or sorry minus seven fifty. I need to get my minuses and pluses right. Plus four seven five for Brandon Jenkins. That's right. That line is right. I think uh, Drakkar Close is going to destroy Jenkins. I don't think that's going to be a close fight. Uh, Kaba Hayo, uh, as I mentioned from earlier on, he's plus one hundred five. Uh, Gazi Omar Gaziev is minus one thirty five. Lena Landsberg is plus three twenty five. Minus four fifty for Penny Keenzad. I think that's about right as well, honestly. I think uh, I think Kinzad will that will win that one. A very interesting fight. Trey Ogden minus uh, one thirty. Uh, Jordan Levitt even money there. Levitt's a very very good wrestler. Ogden is a very good wrestler as well. And you know that even money price could look good if Levitt goes straight across the cage and takes him down as he's done with everyone. You know it's it's a it was a tough fight for me to research this one because Levitt has just had so much grappling uh, dominance over people. So. That's one I'm, I avoided as well. Um, the Filo Baeza fight. Baeza is minus 175 favorite, plus 145 Filo. I think that's right as well. That's a good prize. That's a very interesting. I would just have Baeza as favorite. Filo is a damn good fighter. Um, Devin Clark minus 180. As I mentioned, William Knight plus uh, 150. Actually, a new fight that was actually just announced overnight. I haven't had a chance to look at it yet. Uh, Angie Lusa plus 165 against Munir Lazez. Minus 210. Uh, Lizez was supposed to fight uh, Dos Santos there, uh, and uh, that fight's not happening. So, 
haven't had a chance to look up that yet. Maybe uh, check me out on Twitter. I'll have a couple of a couple of fights of uh, Lusa if I can find them and, and see what I think there. But let's say it's on short notice against a guy coming in at, at minus two ten. Probably you know probably worth taking a shot on. Uh, see a sight unseen, as I say. Right, let's talk a little bit about Bellator. Um, and Patricio Pitbull against AJ McKee. Minus 320 is the line. Right now, as I record on, on AJ McKee, minus 320. Patricio is plus 240. Uh, five rounds, obviously, in the Bellator main event. Um, AJ McKee knocked him out and choked him out nearly in the first round of their first fight. Uh, and this, uh, you know, he tapped him, choked him, and knocked him out <laughs> all, in, all in one fight. And you look at that and think, maybe the line should be a little bit bigger on this, but I think you have to respect Patricio, and I think this line is a respectful one of Patricio as well. He's a very, very good fighter, and he absolutely has a chance coming into this fight. You know, he hits so hard, he's technically very good, but AJ McKee is just such a very dangerous finisher of a fighter, but can go along as well as good cardio. Has it all. Like, AJ McKee is one of these guys that absolutely has it all. So I think AJ McKee is the favorite. I think this is the right line as well. I think this is good. Um... Another one that I, I, I can't give AJ McKee as minus 320 as a bet, you know, because that's just too much. But I don't think plus 240 and, and Patricio is probably enough either. So one maybe to avoid. Uh, I mentioned Corey Anderson and Vadim Nimkov earlier on. Nimkov is minus 170 plus 140 for Corey uh, as, we, uh, as we look at it right now. And that's what I had as well. Um, Adley Edwards plus 700 against uh, Pico minus 1,400. I think that's too too big. Honestly, I watched a bit of Aldi Edwards. He's a good fighter. Um, now, on short notice, he only fought last week as well. That'd be the biggest issue. But um, I I think I would back the over there. Over 1.5 rounds is plus 140. I like that. I like that over there, uh, plus 140 uh, in that fight. Because I think Edwards is good. He's a good wrestler. He can stay in there. He can, he can strike as well. So, yeah, I, I look... I would fancy Pico to win, absolutely, but I don't think it'll be as much maybe of a walkover as people are expecting. Uh, Tim Johnson is the underdog at plus 110. Lyndon Vassell minus 140. I think that's just about right as well. Carvalho plus 140, minus 170. Yaksha Mordov. Carvalho hasn't been on a great run recently. Yaksha Mordov is kind of watching him before a couple of his last fights. He has, uh, he looked good and then didn't, prepare, um, didn't perform very well. So... No, Carvalho, I think that's on short notice as well. Ah, minus one for plus one forty and Carvalho might be the worst bet in the world. Uh Rakeem Cleveland plus seven hundred, Tyrell Fortune minus one forty. Later in the week, if there's a bet on Cleveland, if he's plus seven hundred now, see what he is up by a KO, it could be plus twelve hundred or something like that. Uh that, that price isn't up yet, but if it's there once the fight comes up. That'd be one I'd be looking at because I think Fortune will win absolutely, but Cleveland hits very hard and he's a very dangerous fighter and um Look, I would be surprised if there was uh, an upset here, but I could see it too. Uh, Michael Lombardo, uh, plus 190, minus 240. Kyle Crutchmere, that's that's low. I think that's a good price on Crutchmere. That is a good price on Crutchmere. I think he'll definitely win. I would throw him into an ACA if you're doing one as well. Uh, Gracie is plus 325 against the 2 0 Tyson Miller, minus 450. Daniel Carey is the uh, underdog against Gustin Bolaños. Bolanias minus 320. Alan Benson is a big underdog. Plus 550 against Theo Hag minus 900. JT Donaldson plus 375. Laird Anderson minus 550. Socrates Hernandez is the underdog at plus 165 against Rugelio Luna at minus 210. And then there's some other fights as well. Caleb Ramirez uh, plus 550. Bobby Sorino Jr. minus 900. And Alberto Mendez is plus 250 against Edwin Dos Santos minus 350. So Lots of bets there over in BetUS for Bellator and UFC this weekend. And who will you be betting on on that big UFC on ESPN 34 card? Can you do or do you think Bilal will beat the odds and defeat Luke? Or is the uh, is the Brazilian winning inside the distance given? Get your bets on this weekend at BetUS.com. Use the code SHARDOG and get 125% bonus. BetUS.com has been taking bets for well over 25 years, and there's a reason it's the number one UFC sportsbook. With more betting options, live betting at games, BetUS.com is your new home for UFC betting. Start to fight at BetUS.com. Use that code SHERDOG. All right, everybody, I'm going to leave it there. My name is Sean Sheehan for SHERDOG.com. Best of luck with your bets this weekend. I'll see you all next time.